Good morning and welcome to worship at Hollyton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Dave. Glad that you're here with us today. And whether you're here in person or online or out in the parking lot, uh, I'm so glad that you've joined us. Later this morning, today's message will be emailed to, to you. Um, some of you will receive it in your mailbox later this week. It'll also be posted online. Also be watching for updates coming this week as well. As we prepare for a time of prayer together, your praises and prayer requests can be reported when you enter the church. And if you have forgotten, or if you are joining us online, you can text me now at 716-560-4399 and know that we will add those uh, prayer concerns. We want to say this morning thank you so much to Kathy Cedarholm for playing piano for us. We so much appreciate it. Just as a reminder, we've established COVID-19 protocols, but the question is, why? And initially, we might think it's because it's required of the conference, required of the state, but it's, it's more significant and more personal than that. We have protocols in place to minimize cross-contact so that we don't put others at risk of getting COVID or making them uncomfortable about being here. So please remember to follow our protocols carefully, considering others uh, around you. Not doing so may result in some who are uh, on the edge anyway, not returning to worship. It, it may result in others um, contracting COVID-19, which would result in our closing the church to in-person worship. And I know we don't want to do that, but you know, it's, it's, it's up to you. Um, but please, please understand that your actions impact on those around you. Singing during worship is currently on pause, but you may certainly hum along if you wish. Uh, please continue to wear your masks throughout the service. An opportunity for singing will be afforded to those who have been designated as a singer. You may remain in your seats when the service is over, and if you are not so designated, then you will be dismissed by the ushers after the benediction. Let us, um, let us pray. Lord God, we come to you wanting to know and to grow more deeply in our understanding of your kingdom. May we, through your presence in our midst, begin to see with new eyes and hear with new hearts that we may respond in new ways in the world around us. Lord, we are so grateful for your blessings every day. We are encouraged by your care, your guidance, your protection all along our journey. We praise you for always hearing and answering our prayers, and we're grateful, Lord, when, when we recognize that you have done so. We carry um, joys and concerns in our hearts as well, and with them we offer up to you prayers for uh, Michael, who has gone through 13 hours of surgery. We pray for your healing, for your blessing, and your care upon him. Lord, we, we continue to pray for Brad, who continues in his health struggle. Heal him. Strengthen him. Restore him. And Lord, we have one specific unspoken request. It's kind of an odd way to say it, a specific unspoken. We don't know the specifics, but we know that you do. And we also know that you know all of our unspoken requests. We're grateful, Lord, that your spirit within us pleads with you on our behalf according to the will of God. We know that those prayers will be answered. We know that you are without limits, that 
that all things are possible with you. You can heal every, every wound and provide for every need. We trust you today to do just that. We offer ourselves humbly before you, for we know that, that you are working out your plan in each of our lives. Lord, if, if not for you, where would we go? What would we do? We're grateful that you are doing a work in us, that you are bringing to completion what you have begun. And now, in that faith, we lift up our voices together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Steve, you're going to share some special music with us today. into the new year and how many of you know what's coming you know we, we can't know but we can know this about what's coming that God is doing something and God is going to open up new opportunities for us and of course the new year brings with it new needs along with those new opportunities and and you know, God has been just so good throughout this last year for us. Did you know that despite the difficulties of 2020, we have been able to pay our shared giving 100%? That is a celebration. God has been faithful to us. And we have been faithful through this last year. And that's, that's wonderful. I invite you to continue your ger generosity and your faithfulness in giving. And of course, you know. You know that you can uh, mail your offerings in. You can leave them in the plate when you enter worship. But you can also give online on our, our webpage, uh, Hollyton, or hcfumc.weebly.com. Let's um, pause a moment just to reflect upon God's gracious blessings to us as we consider our gifts to him. Lord God, we thank you for the many ways that you have been faithful to us. You continually bless us. Lord, we offer our gifts to you with grateful hearts. We're thankful that you give us this opportunity to, to be like you in generosity. Bless our gifts. And may they truly bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first hymn this morning is Rejoice, the Lord is King.
Lord God, speak to us this morning through this message that comes before us. We want to more deeply understand the ways of your kingdom. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may clearly hear your voice. Open our eyes once more to see your plan before us and our hearts that we may respond faithfully to what we see and hear. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, we're talking, we're talking about the kingdom of God and, and the parables that Jesus told to help us to understand something that, well, quite frankly, is far greater than we are able to ultimately comprehend. The word parable itself means uh, a comparison of one thing with another to better explain and clarify it. So Jesus gives us these parables of the kingdom, and he says the kingdom of God is like. And again, this is an important concept to understand. It is like, for instance, a seed scattered on the ground. It doesn't mean that the kingdom of God is a seed. It doesn't mean that the kingdom of God is small and round or any other shape that way, and, and that, or that it only grows in the sunlight. No, Jesus uh, paints word pictures that show us a little bit of what the kingdom of God is like. So as we continue looking at a variety of the parables of the kingdom, today we're going to focus in on one. And you may remember um, junior high science experiments. Um, and I'm not talking about dissecting a frog or, or anything like that, but, but those times, maybe it was even in, in elementary school, where we planted seeds in various conditions to see what would happen. Um, one perhaps got sunshine and the other was in the dark. One was planted in some soil and the other maybe was not. Um, but uh, that is the kind a picture that Jesus is painting for us today. So listen carefully to the words of Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord, and may God add blessing to the hearing. Jesus said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1, in another case, a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Like last week, a farmer is scattering seed. And the seed here represents the word of God. This is the gospel, the good news. And even those words kind of represent a parable for us. What is the good news? What is the gospel? Well, there are many ways to think about it, of course. We can think about it in terms of the story, your story, of what God has done for you. Certainly, it is also that that good news that, that we encounter in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, right? But there are other pieces of scripture that, that speak, both in Old Testament and New, about this good news, this gospel message, which is the seed. In our story today, we find that the, the farmer is indiscriminate in how he scatters the seed. He throws it everywhere. 
He scatters some on the path, some on rocky ground, some near thorny plants, and some on good soil. And just like our science experiment, they didn't all have the same conditions for growth. Verse 9 really tells us how important it is. Jesus said, pay attention. Then in verse 18, we didn't read this yet, but in verse 18 he says, consider then the parable of the farmer. Here again, Jesus is taking the time with the disciples to, to help us out with this parable, to explain it for us. He doesn't do that with all of them. But I think this is like a key uh, for interpreting the other parables. It opens them up to greater understanding. Jesus helps us here with an interpretation so that when we come to the other parables, we have what we need to work with. So let's hear what he has to say. Verse 19, Jesus goes on to say, Whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what has been planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown on the path. Now, I don't know how many of you are bird lovers, but, you know, bird lovers will scatter seed. For the, with the intention that the birds will come and take it away. And that's a wonderful thing. But Jesus is using this parable to tell another story. To help us understand what is happening in the kingdom. The path, of course, is ground that has been walked on over and over and over until it is hard packed. Almost like stone. A seed won't grow there. It just sits there. And any seed that is exposed like that will be stolen away by the birds, right? Right. But when the message of God falls on the ears of one who does not or perhaps will not understand, that message is stolen away by the evil one. And this evil one is is Satan, or the devil. And yet, it can also mean more. We're told in the parable that the birds come and take the seed away. So it can also be anything or anyone opposed to the things of God. Then Jesus continues in verses 20 and 21 to, to share that next part of the, uh, the key to this parable. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Do you know anybody like that? Have you seen anybody like that? But because they have no roots, they last for only a little while. When they experience distress or abuse because of the word, they immediately fall away. So Jesus is saying that the seed here begins to grow. It's received joyfully. begins to grow, but it doesn't have deep roots. It can't have deep roots because of the stony, rocky ground. The seeds have a good start, but they cannot take hold. The message of God is readily received, but just as easily set aside. Especially if there is some distress or some opposition that comes along. This is like the person who hears it and it sounds good to them. And they're all in for the moment. But there is no real commitment to following Jesus. When someone argues with them or, or uh, things get too hard, following Jesus gets difficult, they're quick to give up. You may know somebody 
that has been in a position like that. But as we continue through Jesus' explanation, I think, I think here we begin, oh gosh, maybe even seeing ourselves a little bit. Verse 22, Jesus says, As for the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word, and it bears no fruit. That last phrase is a key thing for us. It's of key importance. Why is the, the word supposed to have an impact on our lives? What is it supposed to result in? Fruit. But before we get to that, two things. The worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth. You know, there are a lot of things that can bring stress into our daily lives. Final papers or exams for school. Uh, bills piling up because we're only making it through from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, the, the, what the weather is going to do and whether or not we're going to be able to get to our jobs or whether the roof will cave in under the weight of all that snow. You know, those kinds of things. They can crowd in on us. Whether or not we will catch COVID and whether we'll survive if we do. The worries of life can crowd in. The stuff that creates anxiety in our lives can crowd out the good news. But we're also told that the false appeal of wealth choke the word. You know, Jesus says that this seed grows more than than those of previous examples. It grows healthy and even has some roots, but when life gets hard, I don't know, the boss gets angry, the kids are a problem, <laughs> or the need to acquire more becomes too much. Then, then the good news gets forgotten and eventually just dies. It cannot produce the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those fruit of the Spirit that we find in Galatians. It cannot do that in the hard times or during times when, you know, there are times when we have more than enough and we can easily forget how deeply we need God, right? And then Jesus finishes his explanation of this parable in verse 23. He says, as for what was planted on good soil, this refers to those who hear and understand and bear fruit and produce. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. And in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. This, of course, represents the ideal that we are all called the, the, the good soil, the heart receives the seed, which is the word and is open to the nurturing of the Holy Spirit and of the body of Christ and it then produces good fruit and in abundance now the truth is that we don't all produce uh, the pr fruit in the same way or in the same volume, or even of the same quality. And, and that's okay. The point isn't how much fruit. The point is the production of fruit. Being fruitful. Jesus does not shame the one who produces only 30 to 1. And he doesn't praise the 100 to 1 producer either. 
He just simply states as a fact the expectation that we are to be fruitful. And that is not just the fruit of the Spirit. And certainly it includes that. But we are to be fruitful in reproducing ourselves. In fact, we are to create, <laughs> generate new Christians. We are to share the good news with them. So what kind, what kind of soil are you? What kind of soil are you today? Are you a hard-packed path that has been walked on or under extreme pressure for a long time? Do you find it difficult to understand the word? Does it seem like you hear it and then it just kind of disappears? Are you the rocky ground? Do you hear the word and get excited, but then when questions arise, where the message of the word world presses in, it seems to wither and die in you? Are you living in the presence of thorny plants? You know, I think, I think that this is probably where many American Christians live just struggling with the cares of the world. The worries of life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word. We are a very materialistic society that we live in. And I'm not saying that's the case for any of you. I'm just saying that the society around us has a great deal of impact on our lives. Are you unable to produce good fruit because you were too consumed by what the world sees as important? Are you unable to produce good fruit because you are too um, burdened by life's anxieties? How do you test that? Well, are you sleeping at night? Are you rested when you awake? You know, that's... that's one of those first ways to check that out. Or are you good soil? Do you produce fruit from the seeds that were planted in you some time ago by perhaps a faithful person who loved you to Christ? Again, we learn today that the kingdom of God is like a farmer who goes out and sows seed. We know that some seed falls on the path, some on rocky ground, and some alongside the thorny plants, and, and no fruit is produced, and the seed just eventually dies. Some of the seed, however, falls on the good soil. It begins to grow, puts down deep roots and strong roots that protect it. And in the right time, it produces fruit which feeds and nourishes others. The seed on the good soil also produces more seed. An increase of 100 or 60 or 30. And that seed is planted to grow and produce more fruit for the kingdom of God. And I think there's another lesson that we can learn from the farmer who sows the seed. That when, when it comes to our sharing the good news with others, our spreading seed, we are to be indiscriminate. Don't look just for good soil. And the reason I say that is because God himself has the power to make of the human heart the kind of soil he wants. And we cannot predict the receptiveness of the human heart. The truth is people need Jesus. They need the good news. They need the word. Give it to them. 
indiscriminately. And together, we participate with God in the building of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Lord God, as we consider again what the kingdom of God is like, we confess that we have come short in our understanding. We are perhaps rockier soil than we would like to be. And we've responded in ways that do not honor your call upon us. Too often, Lord, we have closed our ears and our hearts to you. We've chased our own will rather than yours. Forgive us, we pray. And lead us in Christ Jesus, our Lord, that we may with all our heart respond in faith to your word. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for the good news that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again for us. Thank you for forgiveness in his name. Amen. Amen. How great thou art.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.